confidence to give advice. Evli Allah, they have manners. They don't say, we give advice. Although they are the inheritors of the prophets, they say we give association. Nowadays, everyone is giving advice. Worse than that, everyone is giving a fatwa. Everyone is giving opinion. Since when opinion is knowledge? Since when opinion matters? So, Tariqat al Sohbat fil Hayri min Jamiyat. This Tariqat is based on association. Whose association is it? the association of Allah where people are gathering to remember Allah in different ways remembering Allah is not just by zikr remembering Allah is from giving the shahadat to pray five times a day to fasting in the month of Ramadan to giving zakat to going on the hajj that is all remembering Allah to sit down and to make zikr, it is to remember Allah. And to sit and to listen to a sohbet, it is a very high level of remembering Allah. So, the Evliya Allah, the shaykhs, they give sohbets, not us. I am talking repeating certain things to make us to remember what our Shaykh has been teaching. What is it that they are teaching? Why is so that important to us? If I were to ask, people will give different opinions, different answers. It doesn't mean every answer or every opinion, it is true. Or every answer or every opinion, it is a knowledge. In these days, People are not looking for truth, they're looking for fitna. They're not looking for truth because truth is one, fitna is many. They're looking not for one, they're looking to break the ummah up, to break them up, to break the faith up, bring that kid outside. The Sohbat is the association of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in the Sohbat, what we are doing is repeating the Sohbat of the Holy Prophet, the association that he gave to the companions. And likewise, the Ajiya Allah, they are repeating that association of the Prophet with their own needs. And we are sitting in this Ahir Zaman, in this end of times, repeating and remembering and reminding each other of the teachings of our Shaykh. This is Tariqat. This is Sufism. Which part that we have talked about is against to Islam. Only those who are fitna-minded people they are going to say this against to Islam. Which part that we are saying is against to Sharia? Only foolish, foolish, ignorant and arrogant ones they are going to say. That is against the Sharia, against the Shariatic level. What are we doing in the Sohbet? What have we said about the Sohbat that is against to the Qur'an and the Hadith? None. But there is one thing that 21st century Muslims are also forgetting. And this is called Ijma. This is called consensus. What the majority is believing in. Majority of who? Majority of the Munafiks? No. Majority of the Wahhabis? No. Majority of the Ahli Sunnah scholars and the saints that have come for 1400 years, whose mouths and their books they are now shut. 
by the forces of fitna and the shaitanic groups that wants Islam to be broken up, not to become one, wants our solidarity and our strength to be weak. Ijma, there is consensus. Consensus, it is a part of Islam. From the very beginning, up till the fall of the Khilafat, which the fall of the Khilafat, it happened in 1923. So the consensus, it means what the majority they are believing in. And what the majority they agree to, that is correct. There are hadith and there are ayats supporting that. The majority supported Hazrat Yaw Bakr Siddiq to be the next Khalifa. The majority supported that. The next and the next and the next from Khulafa Rashidin all the way down to the Ottoman Sultans. This is important because only with the majority, Ijma, the consensus, can there be unity? If there is no consensus, meaning people don't agree, majority they don't agree, what are you going to have? Complete breakdown, complete confusion, complete jahiliya, like what we're having today. Anyone who has a mouth and a tongue, anyone who knows a couple of ayats and a couple of hadiths, they make their own consensus to themselves, because there is no consensus. But they make their own opinion and they pass it as fatwa, as a consensus, to say that this is in Islam. No matter if they have no knowledge, or they have a little bit of knowledge, or they have borrowed or stolen knowledge. And because the majority of the Muslims now, they have fallen in love with the dunya, and they are not bothering to understand their history or their religion, and they only listen to the voice that is loudest, they start believing. They start getting paranoid. They start getting foolish and they are taking it and they are starting to practice without understanding what was the consensus, majority ruling, majority understanding that has been going on for 1400 years. Of course, the shaitanic ones are going to say for 1300 years, 1400 years, all the Muslims majority have been wrong. That's the shaitanic ones they are going to say. So we are here following the majority and the majority ruling of the scholars and the majority ruling of the saints. There may be certain things according to different uh, tariqats that permission is given to do. But it is in a matter of branches of the faith. It is not in the root of the faith. It is not in the main trunk of the faith. It doesn't concern Akira. Nowadays, everyone is talking about Akira. Akira and Akira. Did you check your Akira? If you say you woke up this morning and the first thought that comes to your head is not Allah and His Prophet, Where is your Akida then for that? You may say with the tongue, yes, we believe in this Akida. But Islam is not just with the tongue, it is what is in your heart. And whatever that is in your heart, you're going to say it with your tongue, you're going to do it with your hands. If you put Allah and His Prophet in your heart, whatever that you speak, it is in remembrance and praising <coughs> of Allah and His Prophet and following the lifestyle of that Holy One, whatever actions that you do. You are not going to now make a separation. But this Ummah has been separated ever since we separate the body from the head. Ummah has been in complete turmoil and confusion and fitna. Who is our head? What was our head? It was the one that is representing the shadow of Allah on earth. 
that is the one who is representing the successor of the Holy Prophet. That is, that is the one who is holding justice and the ruling of Islam. And that is called the Khalifa. Once you separate the body from the head, the body is no good for nothing. Even if the body is strong, the head is not strong. No? The head just sits there. Hands, they do something. Feet, legs, they do something. But no matter how strong your hands and your feet are, you lose your head easily now. The body will be working towards its own destruction. Umat is not looking for a head. For a Khalifa. The majority, they're not looking for a head. A shaykh, a guide, a murshid to lead them. A majority, when they find a murshid or a guide, they're not asking the guide to lead them. They just want to have a social activity. Because for a murshid to guide you, he will explain to you and show you that this dunya that we are living in right now, it is one of the enemies of man. And when you are in the presence of your enemy, you have to be very careful. That is a guide. The guide is not going to tell you don't worry about your enemy. Hug him, kiss him, and he's going to be okay with you. No. May Allah keep us out of this fitna and confusion. And give us more intelligence to understand this and to hold on tight and to our back. Because this world is not becoming better, it's becoming worse. It's not becoming lighter, it's becoming darker. Those who are insisting that no, well, it's becoming better. They are either completely crazy or completely foolish or completely out of touch with any sense of reality or they're working for the left side. <coughs> Inshallah, may we keep our faith and our bayat in our allegiance to our Shaykh, Sahib al Sahib, Shaykh, may he grant us more blessings and more himmat. He may always be under the protection of our Sultan al Azia. May Allah forgive me and bless you.